Hello ladies and gentle peeps, Game Chanel here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about DPS and what it really means. Uh, but before I go into that, I want to thank everyone for all the views. We're close to like 10,000 and I think about four days in all of my videos. So I'm really overwhelmed by the response and all of your likes and comments. Um, on that note, I've read all of them and I try to respond to every single comment you guys post. And uh, I've heard that the volume is kind of an issue and uh, I agree. Unfortunately, my headset currently is a little bit broken. Uh, I have scotch taped the shit out of it, so it actually stays on my head. Um, but I'll get a new one in about two weeks. For now, I'll try to add the volume um, and raise the volume in the post-production, all right? Um, but anyway, um, if you find yourself liking this video or learning something, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe. We're slowly growing and, and I love seeing that. Um, but let's get into the breakdown of DPS and what that actually means. We've all heard about the term DPS before, and it stands for damage per second. However, DPS cannot be measured by a single second. You have to look at it at a string of seconds, preferably 10 uh, seconds or more, ideally a minute, um, or you can even look at it from a whole fight uh, perspective, uh, breaking it down that way. Because if you just look at one second, clearly there are weapons that are much, much stronger than others. For example, the hammer. If you were to use the hammer and you have this charge attack, right? You look at that and let's say we count the second from now, right? We do 11 and then 58. So we're looking at 69 damage. Clearly, that is just one second, and we don't even count what gets us to this second. However, if we change the weapon to something like... Uh, I'm using unupgraded weapons, by the way. Um, let's use the light bow gun with normal ammo. Uh, if we use that and we, do, we try to do uh, damage over one second... Let's see, we have 9, 5, and 5. So that gets us 19 damage. So obviously the other one does more than three times the damage over one second. However, that's why I'm saying we have to look at it over a longer term and a longer perspective. So if we do this for an entire minute, we'll see that both of these weapons probably get very close to each other as far as the damage output is concerned. At the same time, we also have to look at different attacks from these weapons. We can't just tr uh, judge a weapon by a single attack because the hammer, for example, if we charge it like we did earlier, it takes about three seconds to charge and then it takes about a second to do the attack and then the hammer is stuck on the ground and it takes about a second to get it out. So we're looking at a five second attack for 69 damage versus maybe, let's see, three shots. So again, 19 damage with the shooting and then recovering and re-aiming. Maybe we're looking at two seconds per per round of three, right? So so that's very close to, to the damage of the hammer. It might actually be a little bit more at the end of the day. Uh, also depends, of course, on the type of ammo that we're using uh, and all of that. I think we can all agree that the attack number, the attack value, and critical hit chance are very important when it comes to DPS. However, we can't get hung up on these numbers because there are many, many more variables outside of these uh, that we have to take under consideration when looking at DPS and when trying to raise our DPS. The three major ones, in my opinion, are time spent hitting the monster, time spent running away from the monster if, it, if there is an attack incoming and we have to dodge it or block it or whatever. Uh, at the same token, um, we also have to follow the monster on occasion. So I put those two in the same category. And then time spent dying because part of the game is dying and we get sent back to camp. We have to reapply buffs. We have to walk back to the monster. All of that takes time. So when we are trying to kill a monster fast, um, this all of that takes takes away from our DPS because we're not doing any damage. All right. So those are the three major ones. So besides the three major ones, we also have minor variables that play a role in raising and lowering our DPS. For example, um, it de comes down on how fast can you sheave a weapon on a monster that runs away from you. For example, if you're fighting a Legiana and they get hurt and they try to fly away, well, if you can sheave your weapon quickly enough, 
you can do that and then you can take out your flash pot you can shoot it into the sky and you can get the legiana to fall down and you can keep attacking it and keep it in place so if you miss that opportunity the legiana is going to fly away you'll have to follow it and obviously uh, that takes away from your dps because you're not doing any damage also mounting a monster versus not mounting a monster so when you mount a monster you're actually doing a minimal amount of dps However, the important part about mounting a monster is not the damage that you do while you're sitting on it, it's the damage you do once you actually get it down to the ground. That being said, there are some monsters that recover faster from mounting than others. So when they're down, some can recover within a couple seconds and some take 10-15 seconds where you can apply on the same amount of damage. So you have to make a judgment call if it's worth it or not. Usually I would say it is definitely worth it if you play in a party and in a larger group because free players can hit the monster for a good amount of time and that does a lot of damage. However, if you're playing alone and you're trying to do a speedrun, usually you don't see people mount monsters in speedruns because the damage output is usually not worth it. On top of that, DPS is not a constant number. Yes, you can run the same set and you can run the same build and it gives you the possibility of doing the same amount of DPS as you did in the mission before and in investigation before. Um, but if you fight, this, you can fight the same monster one time, two time, or a hundred times. I can guarantee you, you will never finish the same investigation um, or quest in the same amount of time. And that is because the monster is not always going to behave in the same way that we thought it before. So if they were, we could study the monster to the second and we, and we would know, okay, in second 14, we have a heavy attack incoming, we got to dodge that. And then second 19, same thing again. And we could prepare our ourselves for that and we could basically get the DPS to almost the same amount every time however that is not the case I have fought a Nerd Gigante that you know did the uh, flying up into the sky and heavy attack like almost two times in a row um, within a matter of like I don't know 10 seconds and I didn't see that coming uh, and then if you faint you know your mission is over so there is no way for you to know exactly what attack is going to come uh, incoming uh, in a 10 15 20 seconds from now so you can't prepare for that but that also means you have to be versatile and you have to be prepared for everything and and that at that point it comes down to skill and and knowledge and that is another point I'm going to go back to in a second so we have probably all heard of the term glass cannon and glass cannon build before. And what that basically means is a build that is designed uh, to focus on critical hit chance or a very high attack value and overall a synergy um, between skills that are focused to raise your attack directly. Okay, um, and then there's the opposite, which I call the survivability builds or maybe even tank builds. And those are focused on doing a little less damage overall, however, staying alive longer. Okay, because the best glass cannon build obviously is worthless if you uh, can't stay alive and you can't succeed in the mission. So what I mean by that is, for example, with the longsword, and then it comes back down to skill and how well do you know your enemy. For the longsword, there is a dodge attack that allows you to raise your um, weapon gauge or power gauge by one entire level which in return raises your dps so what i mean by that is if you do this dodge right here and you come back and you hit the second it's the second attack the upward swing that you saw at the end i'm going to show you again so look at this and the upward swing um if you connect that you can follow up with a second attack and that w raises your weapon gauge by one entire level now if you really mastered the skill and you get to do that all the time and like you know all the attacks of the monsters and you know how they look like how much time you have before you have to dodge and all of that clearly you can you can run a glass cannon build because you know how to dodge most of the attacks okay and you're unlikely to get hit um, however if you are a player who uh, is new to the weapon for example the longsword can be any weapon however uh, and you don't really know how to play it yet and and you're still learning then you might actually benefit from uh, a little bit more survivability, thus allowing you to further um, 
enhance your skills with a particular weapon because you're not failing and fainting that often, okay, and, and have to restart the mission all over again. Um, but overall, what I want to say is that, yes, glass cannon builds usually have the better chance um, and the highest amount of DPS, but only in the right hands. To further explain the survivability that I was talking about, let's take a look at the sword and shield build that I posted a video of a couple days ago. If we look at our skills, this build has attack boost level 7. At level 7, we get plus 21 attack and plus 5% affinity. Okay. Um, keep in mind that at level 4, we get 12 attack and plus 5% affinity. So at that point, we still get the critical hit chance, but we get minus 9 attack compared to level 7. Okay. Um, it's not that much. The number is actually not that big of a deal, the difference. Um, so if we are struggling with staying alive, what we could do is we could simply go to the decorations and we could replace the two attack jewels to go back down to level five. Uh, and then maybe we can replace one of the granite jewels or maybe the destroyer jewel, which is you know, a decoration that's strictly focused on doing more damage. And we can replace those with something like Vitality, um, which I think is one of the best placeholders or fillers um, or survivability tools that this game has to offer. We could also do something like, maybe not for a sword and shield build, but maybe something like a, like a quick sheath decoration, okay? Three of those would greatly increase the sheathing speed. So if you're running, um, you know, the great sword, which takes a longer time to sheath than the sword and shield, you might benefit from this because you can get it, can get to your potion faster and you can heal faster. Same with the the gobbler jewels right here. Um, it can make a big difference if you uh, increase your item use speed, which includes mega potions um, and maybe that makes a difference between life and death okay so there are many there are many decorations and skills in this game that don't directly um, boost your dps however they have the opportunity and the chance to increase your dps by keeping you alive and there's many many forms of this um, there are armor skills as well um, we have the evade extender, for example. At level 3, you greatly extend uh, your evasion distance. And I showed that in, I think, my hunting horn uh, build uh, and guide video, where um, basically it takes us, as you can see, it takes us one, two, three, four rolls to get from the, from the barrel to this pole, okay? Um, and then with evade extender, we actually only need three rolls, okay? So we go quite a bit further uh, with evade extender at level three than we do without it. Um, obviously, I don't have it on right now, um, and I don't want to switch to the gear for, for you know, time sakes. But if you are interested in seeing that, you can check out my hunting horn video. But that is uh, a summary of why survivability um, can impact your dps lastly i want to talk about knowing your enemies and by that i mean knowing the monsters if you know all the attacks very well and the moveset of a monster that they that they have you can greatly increase your dps by running um, the same gear that you usually would use by basically running any build you can greatly increase your dps because you know what attack is coming but and they usually announce it you know, not in a in an obvious way, but subtle hints usually give it away. You know, if they are like um, some, for example, a I think it's the Azura Rathalos. They are screaming, they are making a big roar, and then they spit out a fireball while you are still uh, stunned from the roar, and they jump back into the air, followed by like a like a backwards roll. If you know that that is incoming, well, maybe you know you have a shield and you can block the roar, or or you have this the skill that uh, I think it's called earplugs that allows you to negate the roar, and that way you can get out the way before, thus uh, allowing you to either flash pot it faster to get it back on the ground, or evade, um, or whatever you want to do. In my longsword build, uh, one comment, one. Uh, viewer mentioned that I could spend more time hitting weak spots with the monster and getting more out of my weakness exploit decoration and he is absolutely correct if you focus on weak spots of the monster 
you greatly increase your DPS over attacking non-weak spots. So what I would recommend, for example, if you have the monster down on the ground and you are attacking the body and you see only gray numbers, well, maybe spend half a second or even a second moving to the head or the tail or the wings or whatever it is that is the weak spot of the monster because sacrificing one second to relocate and then do more damage um, afterwards might make up for the fact that you actually moved within that second, okay? I mean, obviously we're talking small numbers here, but if we uh, if we all summarize them in, in one big you know lump, then uh, over time we're we're actually greatly increasing our DPS. So everything that I've talked about in regards to DPS is pretty much true for every weapon in the game. However, there's one weapon that is a little bit different, and that's the hunting horn. And now I'm going to make a statement, and before you press that thumbs down and write an angry comment, how dare you talk bad about the hunting horn, I play it myself, all right? So hear me out. I want to say that the hunting horn by itself, base, has the lowest DPS potential, okay? That is if you play it by yourself. So if you play it alone and you try to do speedruns or whatever, you're probably not going to use the hunting horn just because it hits slow. Uh, it, yes, it hits a little bit harder than some of the other weapons, but you know, not as hard as a as a long sword or or you know maybe a charge blade or whatever. Um, so you don't get a lot of DPS out of it, even if you build a high DPS build with it. Okay. However, the hunting horn is probably one of the highest DPS weapons, and that's another statement when it comes to group play. So I have done I've done the math before, and if you give your team um, a attack up large buff that actually increases their attack number which you can see on the right side here by about 13 i think 13.9 percent and if you give them an attack up extra large that's close to 19 percent increased attack uh, number okay so if you play in a party with three other people and you give everyone that buff well, you're actually raising everyone's DPS, including your own, obviously, because you applied a buff to yourself. But I want to say that because you, you allow everyone else to do more damage, you could also say that, well, the extra damage that they do could actually go on my account because without me, they wouldn't even do that damage. So what you could do is you can take all these damage numbers that they do, uh, you know, all the damage more that they do now because of you and you can add that to your account and then uh, I'm pretty sure I mean obviously there's a lot of math involved and I'm not uh, a math guy but I'm pretty sure that you definitely uh, increase the DPS um, overall in the fight by a lot okay so that's in that regards the hunting horn is different and uh, and probably the best way to play the hunting horn is by uh, making a high support build maybe uh, very uh, looking out uh, a lot like on your survivability to make sure that you're alive and you can keep your team alive and buffed um, so they don't die because if you save them from dying then clearly you're increasing the dps of the entire fight again okay so there's a lot of utility with the hunting horn versus raw attack and and that is very important to know so this is all I have to say about DPS for today. I know there are many more variables that can be mentioned and uh, that I didn't go over, but I just mentioned the ones that are really important, I think personally and to the most of us, um, that could increase our DPS by a lot. Um, but yeah, as I said, there are many more. And if, if you think I missed something worth mentioning about DPS, about the increase and decrease of DPS, please leave a comment down below. I would be curious to read about that. But this is it uh, for today, and I hope I see you all in the next video.